we create a struct to represent the peripheral and inside the struct we represent the registers with a 32-bit type integer first go to your reference manual search for gpio registers these are all the registers of the gpio peripheral we are going to represent all these registers inside a struct create the struct here we call it gpio we are going to reference memory so always you shouldn't forget to bring your volatile keyword we use the 32 bit int then you need to be careful here now all these registers they are four bytes apart that is 32 bit so starting from mode r then you go to the o-t-y-p-e-r then you go to this you go to that you need to write them accordingly if you let's say you start with the mode r and instead of writing this you write this then later if you want to address this register it will be at the wrong offset you are not going to get the correct result that you want so place your reference manual close by and write them so let's do that the first register that we have the first register is the mode r the next one is the o-t-y P E R O S P D R. We go to the I D R O D R P S R R. Just come to the next line L C K R A F R L A F R H. Then we have the B R R. Okay, so look here the registers are 11. Okay, this is not a register, it's just GPIO register map. What is there? okay so when you go there it actually gives you all the registers starting from the first the mode and the offset yeah so we have 11 registers that is it now after creating the struct then we can just define our gpio gpio a then we will do as we did for here so we need to get the address of gpio a then we will cast it to this struct write your define properly we have our struct we will cast it to point to this GPIO register and we will get the address. Now, this is the address for GPIO A. We just copy it here. Once you have this, I think you can just create the struct for the others. Now, don't forget this is a struct, so we have to bring the semicolon so that the red thing here goes. What do you think if we want to represent? gpi will be peripheral obviously this is b and this is easy you look at the b and the a and the difference is this right that is the offset so what you can do is you can just add 0 s 400 right but i prefer to put this into bracket like this once you get the concept the rest is just easy and that is eight to make it consistent then let's make gpi a as zero now this is how you create a structure for a peripheral of whatever you want to deal with. When we looked at the GPIO peripheral, we saw the input moves, right? We can create an enumerator and we represent all these. Input is 00, which is 0. Output is 01, which is 1. Alternate function is 10. And this is 2. Analog mode is 11 and 11 represent 3. So we do enum here and the first 00 is input, right? we can do gpio input mode gpio output mode gpio alternate function mode and the last one will be gpio analog mode we have represented the modes for gpio the next thing that we can do is we can write a function that will clear the bit for us and also it will set the bit that we are interested in. We can create a static inline function and call it GPIO set mode. If we want to, let's say, we want to set pin 2 of GPIO A, we want to set it to analog, we call that function and we pass it into that. So come here and let's create a function. Let's make this static inline. It will not return anything. Let's call it GPIO set mode. So here we will give it a pointer to our GPIO structure. We will give it pin number. So we can just say pin. And also we will pass the mode that we want to set. Okay. This should be, let me close this. This should be a very easy function. We are just going to replicate this. Okay. First, we need to clear the particular part of the register that we are interested in. But to be able to know where to clear, we need to find the shifting value. Now, the shifting value depends on the pin number. So if we want to clear pin 5, when we look at the mode R register, each mode has two bits. So pin 5, we are going to start at bit 10 because we multiply by 2. Okay, so 
when we come here, we will use that mindset to do that. So instead of putting an arbitrary number here, we are going to put the pin and we multiply it by two. So whatever pin that we pass, we multiply it by two and the three will remain. That should be fine. We will. Now we have passed a pointer to the peripheral. That is the GPIO pointer. And we need the mode R register, right? So we get the mode R register. We end it. We have three. Now we just add U to make it on signed value, right? Now we are going to shape this three depending on the pin that we have. And since, as I explained, each mode corresponds to two bits, we will get the pin and we will multiply it by two. You can leave a comment. Once you have cleared a bit, then you can set it. Okay, to set it, we call the mode R and setting, we use the O instead of the end. Now, there's something that we need to do here. When you look at how we were setting each bit, the setting of the bit depends on the mode that we want to. If we are setting the mode analog, then we are going to set a part of the two bits to 1, 1. But if we are setting as input, input is 0, 0. So this part depends on the mode, okay? And the mode has only two bits. These are all the modes. So when we end whatever mode we have with three, we will get the mode that we want. Then we will shift this according to the pin that was given. So when we come here, we can do mode and three. So let's assume that we are going to set that pin to input mode and input mode is just zero zero. So it means here we pass zero to it. So when we do zero and three, we are going to get zero. So once we have the zero, then we can shift it to the particular bit range that we want and it's just the same as what we've done above this should be easy now what it means is that whenever we want to set the mode of a gpio we just call this function for example we can do gpio set mode the first one is a pointer to the gpio struct so if we are interested in gpio a we call gpio a over here the next one is the pin let's say we are dealing with pin 3 and the next one is the mode here are all the modes so we can pass gpio input mode and it's just like magic so now we don't have to do all of this we have just put everything inside a function right here and we can call it and actually this is the beginning of hardware abstraction layer we are abstracting some of the hardware okay so you are not going to write the registers yourself we put everything inside the function then we will call the function right here there is a little problem when you look here we have to define each instance of gpio so if i need gpio f i have to physically write it here so i will define it then i need to calculate the offset right um, when you look at the when you go back to the reference manual i put here yeah, right here so we have gpi a b c d so if i want gpi o f then i'll have to copy this address right but maybe there is an easy way that we can just write a generic function by looking at the offset here the starting address this is starting from zero then the size is one kilobyte so the offset is one kilobyte one kilobyte right so we can just write the base address and we multiply each by a number okay so if we give this the base address then here this part we call bank because there's an increment and the increment is one kilobyte if we pick the base address for gpio a the bank for gpio a will just be one kilobyte times zero to give us this zero okay and the bank for gpio b will be one kilobyte now one kilobyte in hex will be what zero x 400 so we have zero x 400 times one for gpio b for gpio c it will be zero x 400 times two zero x 400 times three you see where this is going yeah so with that we can just write a generic gpio macro so whenever we call that macro we pass in the bank so if the bank is zero then it means that it is going to return gpio a peripheral if the bank that we pass into the gpio macro is one then it's going to return the base address plus 0x 400 times one so whatever bank we pass into this generic macro it will return the corresponding gpio instance that we want right so let's do that right under here leave some space and let's define it will be gpio and 
this one is going to take let's say this variable called bank we want this to return the gpio instance depending on the bank that we pass to it so we call the struct here and we'll cast it to gpio pointer we get the base address we are going to add that to the offset times whatever value the bank is right we can do this right here as we said if we pass zero here then it means here we are going to get 0 as 400 times 0. So this entire thing will be 0, which means that this GPIO is going to return GPIO A. If you pass 1, then this part will be 0x400 times 1, the same 1 kilobyte. So when we come here, we will get 0x5000400. 0, 0, 0, 0, if we pass 2, get 800. This macro will return whatever instance of GPIO that we want. Now, I think instead of calling gpio set mode here and we pass the specific gpio instance right it will be nice if we can do something like this gpio set mode and we just pass a pin to it then we pass the mode so somehow let's find a way and combine the gpio instance that we want let's say we want a or b and we combine it with the pin number now when you look here the pin is just one byte containing the pin number so we can make this pin number two bytes so that the higher bytes will contain the bank now when i say bank i mean a b c d all right the higher byte can contain the bank number that is the pin bank and the lower byte will contain the pin number example we have this pin gpio a pin 7 right this is gpio b pin 9 so when we call this we will do something like this set mode and here we got the pin and we want to set it to output we can do something like this let us create a macro that the macro will take the bank and also the pin number and combine them okay and it will return pin go right beneath this one let's define this macro and we call it pin okay so this macro will take the bank as i said and it will also take the pin number and we want it to combine them put the bank inside the higher byte and put the number inside the lower byte right to do that let's say we have the first bracket here for the higher byte and we will do all with the lower byte that is the num so whatever we get we will all it with the num we want to put whatever value that we get into the higher byte right so whatever we get here we have to shift it to the higher byte before we owe it with the number so that the pin number will occupy the lower byte and whatever we get here will occupy the higher byte so inside here we want to get the bank and we will subtract a from it so that for example if we are dealing with gpio a then the bank will be zero if the bank is zero for example we call the gpio we pass zero in it will return gpio a peripheral we will create two macros that when you pass let's say you have a pin right a pin that consists of the bank and the pin number when you pass that pin to it the pin number macro can subtract the pin from it and also a pin bank macro that will subtract the bank from whatever pin you pass to it you should find a way to separate the pin number from the pin bank let's call this pin number and pin number is going to take pin and we know that pin is occupying the lower byte right so when we end it with 255 five, you can do this okay or you can also end it with this and it should give you the same thing then we will make the macro for the pin bank the same thing you pass pin to it and this pin bank is going to get the higher byte right so you shift it eight bits once we have these macros we can create a more sophisticated form of the gpio set mode in the new function instead of passing a pointer to the gpio struct and giving it a pin number and the mode we can just give it a pin and mode so when we go inside we can use our macros to get the pin number and the pin bank from the pin that we will pass to it and we can do the same thing right let's write it and see how it will work i'll just copy and paste this all right let's call this mode x more like a superior mode x we don't have this anymore and now we are using two by for this this all that we have so here we will call the struct gpio 
the pointer to GPIO struct and we are calling the GPIO macro to return the GPIO instance that we want. Now this requires a bank, right? Now we have a macro that will give us the bank. So let's call the pin bank here. The pin bank requires a pin that is two bytes and it will shift it to it will shift it right eight bits and it will return the bank that we want. All right. We will pass the pin to it just like that. Once we do that, we are good. Now the new pin that we form, we put the pin number inside the lower byte. All right. So we will we will get the pin number. Let's just name this N to avoid confusion. So this one we will call the pin number here. And the pin number requires a pin that is two bytes and it will get the first byte so we pass the pin to it and easy you int eight now if you are wondering how we are going to use this and how you create this to create this pin is very easy so when we come here we can do you in 16 right let's say we want to create pin a7 right how are we going to do it our macro is here we pass the bank and we pass the number we said we are interested in pin a7 that is gpi a pin 7 so we pass our bank here and we pass the pin number here now you see how easy it is and this is why using hardware abstraction layers is very important in embedded system because you don't want to be calling the registers at every point right what if you want to create let's say gpio b pin 13 okay so we, we do this as usual two bytes pin b pin 13 so all that we have to do is we pass b to it and number 13 okay so once we have our pin like this and we want to set the mode for this pin we need to call this function this is how we are going to do it we call gpio set mode x here right we pass pin a7 to it and whatever mode that we want gpio analog mode now you see the mistake that we made here we are calling this pin a7 and we are passing a and 7 but we forgot to call the macro that is supposed to create it this is the macro right put the macro right here and put the macro right here yes we need a call here now this is giving us red because we are calling it outside uh, main function you know to run c program you need to call it inside main and we are calling it here so i don't really worry about it now this is a very good foundation for what we are going to do next we are going to look at how the boot system works we will write everything how we are going to compile this 